Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to part 10 in creating a hash table project in C++. So we just finished some of our initial testing and uh, everything in our hash class seems to be working really nicely now. But we would like to look a little bit deeper into some of these buckets to see what other information is being stored in our hash table. And uh, so let's go ahead and go to our hash.h file here. And in the public section of our hash class uh, definition here, we're going to create another prototype and it will have a void return type and so we're gonna call this uh, function print let's call it print items in index and then we'll go ahead and pass in a value and this value will be the index that we want to print the items out of so what this function is going to do is we'll pass in let's say the number three and then this function will print out all of the items that are contained in index or bucket three so let's go ahead and go to our hash.cpp file here. And let's just go ahead and define it right there. It looks like a good spot. So it has a void return type, and we are defining it from the hash class once again. And uh, let's see, it's this one right here. So we'll just select that. And uh, so the first thing we want to do is we're just going to create an item pointer, first of all. And we'll just name that ptr for pointer and we'll make it point to the first item that is in that hash table index or hash table bucket and so we want it to point to that first item in the uh, bucket that is referred to by this index variable here so we've got that happening now and uh, so let's go ahead and let's let's look at the case I guess we probably want to see if there's anything in there and so what we'll do at first is we'll just say if that pointer, um, if the name value in that, uh, in that item that PTR is pointing to, if that equals empty, then we'll just print out that there's nothing in that bucket. So if that's the case, we'll just do a see out statement and we'll say um, something like, uh, we'll just say index, or you could say bucket if you prefer that word say index um, and then you say the name of the index or the value of the index so if it's index 3 it'll say index 3 and then you'll say is empty and I suppose we ought to put a space here so it looks nice so index 3 is empty or index you know whatever the index is depends on what value you pass in here and so that will be the case if uh, the name in that first item as the value of empty because that's our default value that uh, we set up with our constructor. So that would be the case if there's nothing there. So let's go ahead and do all the other cases now in this else statement. So in the else statement, we'll go ahead and just put our curly braces in there and then we'll see out and we'll just say something like index and then we probably should figure out what the index is. So we'll print the value of our index to the screen and then we'll just say something like contains, put a space there, contains the following yeah, following items or something like that, something, something to that nature. And then we'll put a new line in there so that way it'll go down to the next line. And uh, then we'll want to print all of the information in all of those items that are in that list that is contained in uh, the bucket referred to by the variable index. So the way we're going to do that is we'll just say while, um, and we can say while PTR, so PTR originally is pointing to the first item. So while that pointer is not equal to null, that means it's still pointing to something, then we're going to we'll print out a border. So we can just put some dashed lines here or whatever you like for a border. And then I'll put a new line there. And, uh, so that's our top border, and then we'll do another see out statement. We'll print out, uh, I guess we'll print out the name. So we'll just print out the name of that uh, that's stored in that item. And we probably want to go ahead and do a new line there. And then we'll also print out that uh, the drink of that item. And uh, so we type in PTR arrow drink. And then we'll put another new line here. And uh, 
we'll go ahead and just copy this one. We'll finish our border here. And uh, so we'll copy that and paste it there. And then one other thing we need to do is after we print out that item, we want to make sure that we advance our pointer so that it's now pointing to the next item in that list. So we do that by saying PTR equals PTR uh, next. And so now what we've got going on is this should dig deeper into any index that we want now. So let's go ahead and yeah, we might as well test it right now. Let's go to the main.cpp file here. And uh, let's go ahead and just run the program that I had uh, in the last tutorial. And uh, let's go ahead and look at one of those indexes or one of those buckets that had more than one person stored in it. So let's go to the top here. So let's see, index zero has two people. Pepper is one of those people. And let's see who else is in that index. So let's go ahead and close this. And uh, right here, let's see, let's... Let's not print the table. Let's go ahead and uh, do the new print function that we did. Print items in index. And uh, let's see, we want index zero because that's the, the index that we were looking at there. So we wanna see what items are in index zero. So let's go ahead and run this program now and see who else is in index zero. So we already know that Pepper is in there. And so let's see, we've got, looks like Mike is also in index zero with a chai tea as his favorite drink. So we've got these two people and their favorite drinks in index zero. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's go ahead and just, uh, let's take another closer look at one of these other ones just for an example. And so let's go ahead and just print the table again so we can see uh, who all is in there. And we'll just, We'll just comment this out for a second. So let's go ahead and just run this program now and uh, see what other index has more than one uh, item in it. And uh, we'll just, uh, looks like index nine right here. We've got Kim with her iced mocha, but we've got two items. So let's go ahead and see who else is in index nine. So we'll go ahead and just uncomment that and we'll change this zero to a nine since we want to look at index nine. And we don't need to print the entire table this time, so we'll just comment that out. Let's go ahead and run this now and see who else is in index 9. So let's see, this is running, and the results are... We've got Kim with an iced mocha, and we've got Steve with an apple cider. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I guess we should probably check... Oh man, I can't remember which one is empty. So let's go ahead and just print the table again and see which one's empty and then we'll test to make sure that uh, this print function recognizes that uh, it is indeed empty. So running it one more time here, it looks like index eight is empty. So let's go ahead and just test our print items and index function. And we're going to place an eight here now since that's the one we want to test and we don't want to print the whole table so we'll just comment that out and then when we run this it should say that index a is empty or something to that nature depending on what i wrote i can't remember exactly how i phrased it but it says index eight is empty and i should have put a new line there but uh, uh, that's no big deal you can see what's happening there so it recognizes that index eight is empty and uh so yeah that looks pretty good so I guess I'll go ahead and stop the tutorial here. It looks like everything is working correctly. I think I'll go ahead and make one more tutorial and just kind of show you some modifications that we can make to the hash table and uh, how that changes the way that the hash table is structured and ordered. So stay tuned for that tutorial and uh, you guys have an excellent day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.